Good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Scuttlebutt Podcast. How's everyone doing? Good evening. How are you, sir? I'm excellent. Um, before we get started, I want to thank all of our Patreon members. Um, so just to remind you, we operate under a nonprofit, so please go ahead and click on the links, donate some money. Our goal is to uh, send veterans to sporting events with, not by themselves, but with a mentor. Our main goal is stop veteran suicide. Veteran suicide. And uh, September is Suicide Awareness Month. Uh, my dog and I, we signed up for a, we signed up for a, a, a thing on Facebook. We, so here, here's the deal. Uh, there was a, a challenge, you know, you and your dog go, go for a walk for 30 miles and you generate $200 and that money will go to help uh, stop veteran suicide. I signed up for it a couple of weeks ago and within the first six hours, my friends and family donated two hundred dollars so i was already at my limit so i was like well hell with that what if i bump it up to five hundred dollar challenge and if you give me five hundred dollars i'll double the miles from 30 miles walk to 60 miles walk that you're money... welcome you're welcome for that by the way yeah it's like, yeah it welcome. was that was combat chaps uh yeah, idea. I, know. I was like hey you need to up it man <laughs> yeah. so you need to up it five hundred dollars uh the five hundred dollars hit my hit hit the count not my account but their account um the, the morning of September 1st, I woke up September 1st. I checked my account. I was like, holy shit, there's $500. So I guess me and my dog are going to walk 60 miles. Yeah. So every get day we've done, been walking. Brother. Get it yeah, done. We've been walking three miles every single day. It's not 60 miles at one time. It's accumulative people. So relax. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you I probably did if you did 60 miles in one day, man. <laughs> yeah, I would die. But um, so go ahead and uh, hop on my Facebook. Uh, donate two bucks, five bucks, whatever you got. Donate to uh, our charity here. Um, just donate, man. Just get out there and get involved. You don't have to donate to my charity. Donate to anybody. Like, let's, yeah, get involved. We we, we have a, a vessel here, man. And like our whole goal is to save a life. Like if you save one life in your in your entire existence, like holy shit, man, that's life change. Obviously, that's life. Not just for you. You just affected thousands of people uh-huh now what person they're, that one life you saved you just you just affected a thousand people easily yeah. their families their friends of uh, people around those persons that you just saved i mean come on yes. yeah it's just so, a it's a it's a it's a waterfall domino effect of love and happiness and this is what we want yes so my uh co-host here combat chaps he tried to commit suicide unfortunately. i did in 2009 fortunately yes, didn't didn't work. Didn't uh, work. Our guest, uh, First Lieutenant Anton Harp, unfortunately went down that path. It didn't. Uh, fortunately, that didn't work. Th- thank, freaking thank God, God for that. Because this guy, <laughs> dude, see, like guys at home, this guy, uh, I, I've only known him for like maybe Two seconds. thirty-five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, he is just—he told his whole story. I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> so, hey, sir, um, it, it, it's on you now, man. Who, who are so, you? Tell, tell 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 the people who we yeah. Who this you is what are. we do. We get your uh, life story before, during, and after. So this is your show, buddy, man. Let yeah, me... man. Go ahead. Light well, it up. Light geez, it up. Well, well, thank you for having me. Uh, yes, my name is Anton Harb Jr. Uh, right. I, cur- I currently live in Macomb Township, Michigan. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. So uh, not as much snow here in Michigan, but yeah. it's still not as warm as I'd like it to be. Correct. Uh, grew up. Um, you know, pretty, uh, pretty conservative family, raised Catholic, um, went to the Catholic schools. And uh, uh, when I was 16 years old, uh, my story kind of really began to take a turn. Uh, I joined the volunteer fire department in my community. And I did that until uh, I got into college and joined ROTC, uh, was given an ROTC scholarship, and then 9-11 happened. And that's kind of where my story really began. Uh, you know, I tell folks, I remember sitting on a fire truck on 9-11, uh, you know, as this young kid with no experience uh, waiting to get called in to New York City. Thank God that never happened. We were just a standby crew for 
to kind of help with the the cleanup. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, at that point I was in ROTC and that's really where, where my life took a turn and, and I committed to, to, to this country. Uh, I graduated in 2004 with a uh, criminal justice degree and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the field artillery. Uh, I don't know. To this day, I think I'm thinking, man, I should have went and flown choppers or something. But I do love the king of battle, right? That was it was something about something about those guns that just kind of shook they're me loud. to my core. They're, they're they very were loud. loud. Uh, you know, it was ironic about me. So I went to my officer basic course. It was September of '04 graduated in uh, March of 05. And I was the only guy in my class. Uh, I had deployment orders before I even left. And it was crazy because I don't know people in artillery school, there ain't no, we ain't, we ain't shooting no M4s or NFC, none of that stuff. Right. I was just this 22 year old kid right out of OBC. I didn't know a damn thing. And uh, my initial plan was I wanted to go to ranger school out of OBC. I was supposed to go to third infantry and on Fort Stewart and they diverted me. Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, Savannah. Yeah. And I ended up getting diverted uh, to Fort Lewis, Washington. And I was supposed to go to sec second ID at the time who had just come back and just come back from deployment. And I had already had the deployment orders. I said, screw this. I want to go blow some shit up. So nice. I, wa I walked in, I walked into you know, I, to I at Fort Lewis and said, I want to deploy right now. And, um, <laughs> was, uh, I got everything I asked for. That's I, awesome. I, they, they diverted me over to first brigade 25th infantry, which is now second cavalry regiment, uh, striker cavalry regiment. I believe they're up in Alaska now. Uh, and, and not only that, I wanted to go to 214 cav, which was a reconnaissance unit stationed up in Talifar. And, uh, I got there four weeks later. I was on a plane to uh, to Kuwait. I actually landed in Talifar on my 23rd birthday. And that was like uh, an eye-opening experience. Talk about uh, not knowing your ass from from a hole in the wall type of experience, right? Yeah. And uh, they introduced me, said, these are my guys. This is what a striker looks like. I didn't even know what the hell one of these things was. They said, good luck to you. And, you know, hours, you know, not, not long thereafter, we're, uh, we're getting ambushed in Talifar. Right. So I, I kind of had an experience of, of literally learning under fire. Uh, my guys had been there for six months already. Uh, these people did not know me. I mean, to show up and, and claim myself as their leader was, uh, yeah, like I went up to my platoon sergeant and said, you keep me alive. And I will sign whatever paperwork you need, my friend, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> whatever you need, just keep me alive. And, and he, he, he honored that promise, right? So um, I operated in uh, Mazul uh, for those at Fob Merez, Fob Diamondback. I was up in Fob Sykes in Talifar. Uh, did a lot of work in Rawa, Sinjar area up on the Syrian border. And, um, ended up getting sick over there. You know, thank God I was never wounded, but, uh, I got pretty physically ill and was medevaced out of Iraq, uh, to the point to where I even by bypass launched. I was so sick. They sent me back stateside, which at the time was, was unheard of, right? They wanted mm -hmm. you to get back into yeah. the fight. So, uh, you know, at the time for me, um, you know, the signs of PTSD at that point was called acute combat stress. PTSD wasn't a, wasn't a word we were even acknowledging at that point. Being in Fort Lewis, yep. uh, as I was telling y'all beforehand, there was a, it was, it was found to be, it was a, a big mental health scandal. Like the doctors there were, were overtly trying to skirt around the mental health issues the troops were facing when they came back. Yep. Uh, me being an officer, uh, was kind of a, a added another layer of complexity to the issue because we were supposed to be bulletproof, right? We weren't really not supposed to yeah. speak you up guys, about what we you were You guys put through. on your pants differently than us yes. enlisted guys. That's what we're yeah. supposed to think. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. And, and I never agreed with that. I never agreed with it. I never, you know, we were all one team, one fight, right? I think one team, as one an, fight. As an officer, I think that... Um, in the way I entered going right into combat with no experience. I mean, they gave me an M4 that wasn't even zeroed. They said, here you go. I didn't even get to zero my rifle before I went out into the city, right? Okay, oh. so uh, I, I kind of viewed things differently. 
I think I, I was a little closer with my guys than other, I, that, uh, that relationship, I think there that separation, I counted on my men to, to really keep me alive. So I didn't, I, I, the last thing you're right of you. Yeah. The, of course. the first time I cleared a house was in Talifar and the, uh, the, the, my commander basically said, okay, you're going number one, man, you're going to learn how to do this right now. And that is how I cleared a house, and that is how I learned to do it. So, uh, uh, sorry, uh, just to just to um, uh, interrupt you one second. Um, I, I have a very similar because two weeks after I graduated SOI, we were in Iraq. I was 26, had no idea what I was doing, um, and I even I even I was the one guy that cleared this room with a saw. Okay, <laughs> that's how much I really paid attention at, at School of Infantry because you're not supposed to go in first with a saw because. Yep. What if it jams? You're going to get killed right then and there. Sorry. Well, well, no. I, hey, at the time, they were actually, uh, you know, you go through the door, but they were barricading the doors. But you might kick the door, and there may just be a, a you know, machine gun pointing yeah. at you. Yeah. So then, yeah. you know, you're clearing from the from the top down and all these kind of advanced tactics that I just had no damn clue. Was, was anybody was in the house when you cleared it? Oh yeah, there, there were people in the house. Yeah, yeah. No, no, nobody shot at me. Thank God. But uh, yeah, yeah, there were people. There were definitely people in the house, and and that's you know, I I think for me, uh, you know, I remember getting advice from this old crusty first sergeant. You know, <laughs> so, you know, show these people you're not scared. You know, you know, there's IEDs and stuff going off in these striker. And the beauty of a striker is you can blow the shit out of that thing and it would keep rolling. Eight blown out tires and that thing would still keep going, right? Nice. Um, but I never, you know, really I, I look back and I feel like the experience I had as, as a leader was different. The way I presented myself, I didn't really get to be a leader because I didn't know what was going on. Right. There was this whirlwind of, of, of just stuff. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got back stateside, you know, I really began suffering from, from the PTSD. Uh, and I was discharged in 07 uh, ironically, because my, my unit at the time, first brigade 25th ended up going to Germany. And I was getting out. There was no way I was going to Germany. So I was like on medical hold. And they were, you know, when I showed up to get my DD-214, they were like, who is this guy? They like forgot about me, right? Uh, I got my 214 and drove off the, you know, drove off the base. And I never looked back. Um, 2007, I actually ended up working uh, for the state of Washington as a parole agent, downtown Seattle. Uh, I, I, I jumped right back into the fire. You know, my job was to monitor homeless level two and level three sex offenders in downtown and downtown Seattle. Right. So that's all I just, day job. Yeah. That's an all. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> but, but stress like that, I, I that's how yeah. I function is off of that adrenaline. Uh, you know, you know, you guys know how that is. I, I uh, have a question. Sure. Sure. Were you, uh, were you in Seattle? Um, let's see. Oh, you said Oh seven to, to when I left in December of Oh eight. Because my brother, it's funny, uh, my brother went to UW, go Huskies, mm -hmm. um, and he actually was a chef. He he cooked at Canlis, he cooked at um, uh, Bremerton, uh, oh, he, he was a chef all over the place in Seattle. And he actually, he died in Seattle uh, up on Capitol Hill That's at that Episcopal Church up there. That's where his funeral was. I worked, I worked in Capitol Hill, yeah. I was oh, actually, uh, and, yeah. And, and, cool. and, and um. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, uh, Elizabeth, no, what, what's, uh, there's different sections of Seattle. There's, uh, mm -hmm. the Capitol Hill, there's, um, uh, 500 Roy street is where my brother lived up on okay. the hill. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, princess, Eli Prince Elizabeth, Prin princess Elizabeth. Is that a, a section in Seattle? I haven't been there in so damn long. Okay. I mean, All right. it, Never mind. It, it could be. <laughs> I actually, you know, it was funny. I, I worked out of the precinct. If you remember when the whole riot thing was happening and they, yeah. they took, they took over that Seattle precinct and, yeah. and, and I worked out of that. That's where I worked out of. Yeah. Right. It's crazy. Jesus. Uh, and, and I loved, I loved, uh, Seattle, but the money wasn't there. So I actually, me and my buddy were rolling around town one day and I said, Hey man, let's apply for the feds and get the hell out of here. Right. And we put in for the border patrol. And then 2008, we went over to the border patrol. And then uh, months later I was running around Sonoida, Arizona, uh, 
crazy times, right? Went to the academy, got out of the academy. That which I'll, I contend that the Border Patrol Academy was more miserable than any military. You know, even really? Jump. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. I went through jump school and whatnot, and it was it was a highly unpleasant experience. Wow. And uh, yeah, so I did that until, uh, ironically, uh, I was I was in about a year and a half and was carrying a fifty pound bundle of marijuana down a mountain. We had jumped a group of drug mules, and they dropped their Hell. they dropped the dope and they run right. That's kind of how it goes. And I blew my knee out. And I remember saying, I cannot do this. This sucks. This is miserable. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> and I do what every other person does with the feds is we hopped on USA jobs and started looking for a new damn job. And I came across this little agency called the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. And they do uh, actually internal affairs. They investigate IRS corruption, threats to the IRS, um, uh, and I applied and it was crazy because there's only like 230 of these folks in the entire nation. And I applied and they, they gave, I was a special agent with department of treasury and, oh. uh, yeah. So I went to move to Boston, picked my, told my ex-wife, meet me Go in Boston, uh, pack her Go up. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, went up to Boston. I, uh, ended up getting attached to the FBI joint terrorism task force up in Boston <laughs> And I worked um, domestic terrorism, sovereign citizens. If you've ever, if you've ever heard, yeah, of. yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I was, I was, my specialty was sovereign citizens. You weren't up there I, for the uh... Boston bombing. Well, yeah, yeah. So I left. Oh, so shit. my, so my partner, actually, my partner at Treasury was the dude who ended up getting attached to FBI, who actually identified white hat, black hat from the Lord and Taylor video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah, partner yeah. was the one who I did. I left just before that happened. Holy shit. And no way. Uh, because what happened was, is ATF ended up picking me up. So um, at the time I was looking, uh, I enjoyed treasury. It wasn't fast paced enough. I really wanted to go after the violent crime, which is kind of where my heart lied. And ATF opened up this 24 hour announcement and they had 20,000 veterans. It was a veteran only announcement in 24 and 24 hours. They had like 20,000 applications because ATF hadn't hired for like five years at that time. And I put in, I said, screw it. Let's put in. There were only 24 spots in the nation. There are 20,000 people that applied for it. And they actually ended up only hiring 15 of us at the end of the day. When my academy class, there were only 15 of us out of all those people that could actually pass the polygraph and the, the credit check. And the, it was nuts, yeah. right? So yeah. uh, I, uh, you know, I, I went to ATF and they they gave me all these choices. You can go to Fort Lauderdale and Miami and Austin, Texas and Detroit. And I said, oh, what? <laughs> what? Uh, they said, oh, yeah, there was all these nice locations. They're Detroit. And I said, okay, where am I going, guys? They said, Detroit. I said, shit. Okay. So I told my ex-wife, okay, meet me in Detroit. Pack it up. Let's go. And I went to the uh, ATF Academy and graduated out of there and came out and ended up working. Uh, I, I went right into undercover work right out of the academy. I was assigned to an undercover drug and gun group uh, in Detroit. And uh, that was really my passion. I loved working undercover. I loved the caliber of people I was working with. Um, 2014, I actually ended up, I was robbed during, I was going to buy a gun and some drugs from, uh, out of a, a drug house, uh, from Damn. a pretty bad dude. And I ended up getting robbed. He robbed me pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it was, he didn't obviously didn't know I was a cop. Right. So, um, at the time I was, you talk, I had all this war PTSD going on. I had all these things in life going on and then the robbery happened and that really kind of messed my world up. It really traumatized me. Did and you have backup? You weren't like by yourself, were you? I was. Okay. So interestingly, there was backup. We had a lot of new agents that were a part of our group and they couldn't get to me. They didn't know where I was at because they didn't Damn. know the area. So I had to fight my way out of this drug house uh, in D Detroit Holy while my, while I waited, while I waited for my buddies to show up, they did eventually come to, they, they did, they did respond, but um, yeah, it was a highly uh, unpleasant experience, what but the, what I'll tell you this, uh, when I went back to the office, they gave me, they said, take two days and decompress. I'll tell you two Monday days. morning, Monday <laughs> morning, baby, I was back out there buying dope. Uh, so, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
Uh, I ended up, uh, I worked the undercover drug and gun stuff for a while, ended up getting assigned to the arson and explosives group. And I worked uh, our federal arson cases and explosives cases. I did end up working undercover. Um, I penetrated a couple uh, pretty nasty groups of folks. And um, I'll tell you at this time, I, I think what we, what we, what we don't recognize. I'm, I'm, I'm literally amazed <laughs> over here. Yeah, I just, this, my this mouth is, all, like, is open and I'm this, like, what? this is all the There's real more. This is all the real deal <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this, I'll tell you, this was kind of the culmination of my career at this point. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, we all go to the VA, right? And uh, I was mentally not doing well. And, you know, as they do, we started, okay, try this, take this, take that. Now we'll give you some volume. We'll give you this. We'll give you that. And I started suffering from headaches, severe headaches. And it uh, turns out they ended up diagnosing me with fibromyalgia. I always hurt. I'm always chronic pain. It's just, you know, most veterans deal with chronic pain on a daily basis. But the VA, actually, I, I was on fent. They had me on the fentanyl patch and oxycodone oh, and Xanax Jeez. and this. And so I was really a walking pharmaceutical. You were cocktail. a zombie, dude. Zombie. But I was out there working undercover every day, baby, right? I, Holy shit. Um, it actually got to the point to where the opiates screwed the nerve up in my stomach. I ended up getting this gastroparesis thing where I couldn't eat. I just would puke my brains out and I, it was highly unpleasant and uh, the VA couldn't do anything for me. And that's when my life took another turn um, in the state of Michigan. We have a medical cannabis program and yeah. uh, it had gotten, Oh, and, ba and I'll back it up. 2011, I actually survived testicular cancer from the burn pits, I'm sure. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, so uh, I had kind of taken a look at my life and said, okay, you survived cancer. You survived all this other shit. Let's take a look at the cannabis. Uh, if you do this, there's probably going to be an expiration date on your career. But I did. I went, I got my medical, you know, I did it the legal way that you could in the state of Michigan. And uh, it changed my life. I was able to, to sleep, eat. I was able to, you know, the, the anxiety wasn't making me as sick as it was. I had finally had something that was helping me. Um, so I'd had did the medical cannabis thing for a while. And then 2016 rolled around. That's kind of where um, life really took a turn for me. Um, you know, uh, working undercover and doing that job takes a toll on a marriage. It's very hard to have a marriage. It's hard to have, you know, you know, to be with your children. It's hard to associate with people. I was living this double life that um, my identity was li literally, I was living as another dude. And uh, that October 31st, uh, uh, swallowed a bottle of Klonopin and a fifth of vodka. And that was pretty much the, uh, that was supposed to be the end of my story. Um, ironically, uh, my buddy, I don't know how this ever happened. Um, uh, as I was dying, I guess you would say, my buddy called my phone. He happened to be the phone pinger. He was the dude that can like find the phones type of deal. Yeah. And he heard I was all messed up and they pinged my phone and they figured I was in a hotel room. And um, when the cops showed up, I was just about dead, but I was able to, I, I, I was passing out and, but they were banging on the door. And I remember I was able to slip my hand over the handle of the door. And I was just as I passed out and they were able to force their way in. And they revived, they took me to the hospital and they revived me. Uh, at the time, you know, nobody knew I was a medical cannabis patient. Uh, my boss, uh, within his infinite wisdom, who showed up as a show of support um, at the time, ATF, um, rifled through my, my pockets. They wanted their badge and they wanted their credentials back is really what they right. were looking for. But yeah. I actually had my, I had my weed card behind my badge. That was the end of the career there because, <laughs> well, I was in the hospital for a little bit. I got out and they said, come piss in the, come piss for us. And I said, nope, got me guys. I'm dirty. And, um, and, and, and I wasn't fired or anything at that point. They, I just, I resigned I, and I ended up retiring out of there. And, um, you know, and I think really life, life is weird. They don't tell you retired at, you know, shit, I was 2006, I was at 35, 36. Um, you know, they don't, they don't tell you that adjustment to life because I've, I had this service. I've always served somebody and I've always done these right. super high caliber jobs and now I'm a nobody. And I really, it's, I struggled with it. Yep. And for years, and it really hasn't been the last maybe three years, I've really gotten comfortable 
um, with things. You know, I've connected with a lot of different veteran organizations, Creative Vets, who I know has been a very important. You know, wait, 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 wait. Creative Vets in, yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, Nashville, yeah. Tennessee? Yeah, 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 yeah. Richard Casper. All my, you know all Richard? My, oh, yeah. I know Richard. Okay, I know Richard. Yeah, Dude, I know, that's where I my just, life I just wrote a song for them with uh, Jesse, yeah. Jesse Taylor. Yeah, I, I, just seen, I just seen Jesse in May. Yeah, so 2018 is, <laughs> awesome. is when life. Oh, my God. That's yes. amazing. So 2018 is when life got better. I, 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 I made a promise to myself. I said no, a couple of things. I'm going to really try and connect with people and I'm going to travel the world. So in 2018, uh, I went to Peru and, uh, and, and, and did the whole shamanic. I went and drank ayahuasca and I drank, you know, went up into the another, Andes. Another ayahuasca another, guy. Another, I did. The, the, you're a third the, one. Yeah. And I went and did the ayahuasca up with, I got the shaman and stuff. And I was introduced to creative vets and I ended up doing a two week art program at the university of Southern California, where I met some of them best friends in my whole life. Big Mike, do you know, big Mike, big uh, in the big wheelchair, Mike. big Mike. I love big Mike. Yes. Big Mike's my boy. Big Mike. Big, big Mike. <laughs> he, I bought a pair of white shoes for yes, him to decorate yes. and I haven't done it yet. And I'm sorry, big Mike, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I'll get those shoes to you. I swear to God. Big Mike's my boy, right? So we all did this art program, and and it changed my life. Like I no said, holy way, shit. dude! This is like such yeah. a small world right now. <laughs> it is. Holy it is. shit! Yep. And and when I came back from Creative Vets, life life changed. I was on a new path. Uh, I did a lot of you know connecting with other veteran groups. Yeah. Uh, I've just done a lot of traveling. I've you know gone to Egypt, and we did Cuba. I went to Cuba in February. Um, because I want to understand these different cultures. I want to understand this world we live in and why is the world the way it is. And, and so I've been kind of on this fact finding mission, if you will, just to connect with everybody. And man, you uh, need to go talk to Lieutenant commander, Matthew Wiz, Wiz. Buckley, man. Yeah. I mean, we've had like, you're seriously, you're like the third guy that's done so, like Marcus Luttrell yep. and Matthew Wiz. They did all this stuff. It wasn't ayahuasca. It was, um, it was I think what the hell was it called? Yeah, it's I, I, Ibogaine. Oh, Ibogaine. Ibogaine. Yeah. You know, I, I have not, I have not tried Ibogaine. Well, I'll tell you this. I'll back it up. In 2018, also, I have started ketamine therapy. There's a doctor Special in, K. in Michigan. Nice. Yeah, I started doing the ketamine infusions, and then um, I actually, there, this doctor will prescribe it like a take-home dose of ketamine, and I've been. I've been on ketamine for almost four, four, four over four years now, and it's been a life I, changer. I'm, I'm sorry. I did a lot of, okay. I did a lot of drugs in college. I never did special K. Um, I actually had one friend who took too much and he was in a K hole. Oh right? yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And I had to help him out with that. Yep. But like, I, I had this question, um, MDMA. I mean, mm -hmm. I did a lot of ecstasy in college. I mean, a mm -hmm. lot, my junior mm -hmm. year, but it wasn't for, getting healthy it was for getting messed up because mm -hmm. xc was pretty cool back in the 90s yep what is it um is it beneficial is mdma is that that study uh, is that is that beneficial to people so i have i personally have not done the mdma okay. study or any of that but i will say yeah it's been i mean the, the fda they're saying within the next year or two it will be a federally available treatment and actually the v surprisingly to show the you VA how, is going to be VA is actually, the va is doing trials right now i think there's no a way yeah uh i know um new york uh the, I said the bronx va or whatnot they're actually yeah. doing it where they're using it on veterans um you know the thing with the ketamine though is nobody will pay for it so i got to pay for it out of my pocket and it's incredibly expensive but I, isn't, I benefit isn't, from it. isn't ketamine isn't that like a horse tranquilizer or something like that it's a it's a disassociative anesthetic is what got it. So okay. it's anesthetic. but when, when i remember when i said i have fibromyalgia yeah it, being an anesthetic it serves as my pain medicine as well but it's a, not an opiate it, it i get good pain relief from it but i is also it a pill get, that you take uh yeah it's this little like a lozenger you put it underneath your tongue it's a special pharmacy out of grand rapids that puts it together and that's where my, uh, that's where my dad was born yeah Memphis. yeah yeah yep and you take it uh, daily uh i take it every other day every so no day. not not daily uh and and i'm lucky i've i've never had any side effects from it i've never had any bad anything from it it's really been a a beneficial wow. it's been a beneficial treatment um so between the the ketamine and the cannabis i've really it's shockingly the two so things that VA, they don't want you to do has helped right wow <laughs> well because there's amazing. no money in it for them Right. Yep. So uh, 
cannabis. Mm -hmm. uh, Michigan is cannabis friendly. Do you, so do you grow your own cannabis? I do. So, um, so the other thing that I've done is I've really, I'm known as the veteran weed guy here in Michigan. If there's You're anything the to do with, weed guy. I'm the veteran weed. If there is anything to do, I mean, at the, at the state level, I do a lot of yeah. lobbying. I do a lot of, I mean, I'm very, very involved with yeah. cannabis here in Michigan at every level. And, uh, what I've done as, as a patient, I really connected with our patient community. And then in 2018, we passed it recreationally, uh, our, our recreational law here in Michigan. Yes. And uh, that was that was where things have really taken off. I, I've helped. Uh, there was a group of cannabis uh, industry folks who I, I, I helped them start up. Uh, it's called Hero Project USA, which is one of the first nonprofits uh, aimed uh, with a cannabis theme. We don't give cannabis to veterans. We don't, uh, you know, there, there's no product or anything like that. But what the message we try and give is to help veterans to create access, to give veterans, inform them and educate them on medical cannabis. Um, the other thing I'm in the process of doing right now is we got a lot of veterans who I'm sure we all know who've been kicked out for cannabis possession or cannabis yep. use while they're in the military. And then they get another than honorable and then life sucks because yep. they can't, can't get, get benefits, a job. Right? So, yeah. but there is this wonderful process uh, from a law called the veteran fairness act of 2016 that allows a veteran who has a diagnosis of PTSD or TBI to be reevaluated by the DOD to be upgraded to an honorable discharge. So um, part of the work that I'm doing now is we're putting into place to, to put together resources so those veterans can reach out oh, and we can get cool, them. Man. Yeah, we, we can get them a, a lawyer. We can get them a, somebody who knows how to put the packet together to get them submitted to DOD to get that discharge upgraded to an honorable so they can get those benefits. Benefits they oh, deserve. I got a couple of people that probably need to call you. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure yeah. yeah. That's, that's, uh, you know, uh, what I see here in Michigan now is veterans have been left in the dust really. Yeah. And right now I'll tell you this. Well, when we passed our, uh, recreational law in 2018, we actually set aside $40 million in excise tax. So people, when you go and you buy a cannabis product, there's a, there's an excise tax attached to that purchase. And as a, as a state, the people voted to put the first $40 million of that aside for research, cannabis research in veterans to decrease the suicidal rate uh, of, of veterans among our community. And uh, so they, they, they gave $20 million last year and it was $20 million this year. And it was supposed to be a great thing. And I'll tell you right now, one of my things as an advocate here in Michigan, um, the state didn't do it properly the way they disseminated the money. They, they, went, they decided to go the route of being the good old boys and give it to, give it to folks. It, it wasn't done properly. So um, who knows? You may even see more news about this nationally. I've been fighting to make sure that our veterans are cared for, that when we're using cannabis products and veterans, that they're FDA approved for these studies, that we're not just willy nilly given products to, to veterans right. that haven't been vetted properly. And that wow. is where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, I've been working with lawmakers. I've been working with our advocates. I've been working with the lawyers, the doctors, the academics and uh, the media and trying to put this together to call the state of Michigan out to make sure that they do it properly. And this is something over the past, even just few days, it's really taken off. Uh, can you I, uh, I, can you come down to Tennessee and and talk to some people down here? I love I oh <laughs> shit I I was just down there in May. I love Tennessee. I want ha Hattie B's man. I gotta get some hot Hattie chicken. B's on um, on Broadway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I gotta Hell get yeah. me some well, hot chicken. I'll drive down just for the hot chicken. Next time you're down here, you gotta yeah, let you us get, know. You come man. and visit. Uh, Semper Sliders on Music Valley Drive. Yep, it's owned by a veteran. Marine veteran, great friend. We just did a suicide prevention hike on Saturday. Mm -hmm. He was the lead coordinator for the Reverend Warrior hike. Oh. It was awesome. It had 250 veterans mm -hmm. marching around Nashville. I did half the hike with my buddy Matt, and it was awesome. And yeah, when you it's... come down to Tennessee, you better give us a call. 
I would absolutely. I love Tennessee. All my buddies, Sal Gonzalez, Steve Cochran. Wait, all, wait, 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 those yeah. are my boys. <laughs> Dude, he just played Saturday night at Heroes yeah. Dance. How do you how do you know Sal Gonzalez? How do you know Sal Gonzalez? <laughs> Sal and I met through uh, Operation Cherry Bend, like four. Oh, years. Cherry he, Bend, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was just at my house. He was he did a speaking what? thing down, and he was just at my house. Dude, he ago. just played three hours at Heroes Den last yes. night. And I, I was the one that gave Sal the na- uh, his name to the owners of this restaurant. Yeah. It's a, it's for heroes, for Leos, for firefighters, for EMTs. Yeah. And we go there. It's owned, uh, owned and operated by veterans. Mm-hmm. Sean, uh, the owner, it was uh, Army. He has some top secret clearance. He won't even tell me like his birth date. But his wife <laughs> Rosa is 118th Air Wing, and she's still way in. better looking than him. And way better, yeah, Rosa. You're way better looking than Sean. He is. He's just ground up meat, man. That guy needs. Yeah, no, we're we're all uh, Sal is my very good friend. Sal, dude, I've known Sal. We've known Sal for five. Like I've I've known him for five years. Yeah, yeah, I love the dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve Cochran too. Steve, Steve Cochran. He's actually staying out in Waterford. He's like 20 minutes yeah. up the road. Well, he's up me. in Michigan right now. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like 20 minutes up the road. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Yep, so yeah, Stephen gonna... comes back, I think, on the 20th. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, And he's got a show on the 16th. Yeah. And then he's coming back. And then I don't, I don't know if he's told you up. what he's doing. But What's I'm like, yeah, he's uh, – oof. Man, is Cherry Bend awesome. in a, is it a event in Michigan? Yeah, no, uh, actually, Operation Cherry Bend is an event down in Wilmington, Ohio. It's uh, on a, it's on the pheasant farm, and oh, it's yeah, my and that's event. where Stephen Cochran's going. And, yeah, and, yeah, Steve. And, yep, he's yeah, playing. Yeah. Sal will be Sal's there. gonna play too. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sal yeah, was yeah. just talking about it on Saturday about going to Cherry Bend because oh, yeah, he's yeah. done it like okay, three years in a row, right? He more, I think he's done maybe. He's five, done more than that. Okay, five years, maybe even six years. Yeah, Sal, we have a bl- we have a blast. I love that event. It's so I helped, dude. Fun. I helped him move out of his old house into <laughs> his new house, which he lives like ten minutes away from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, I know everybody kind of lives close down there. Yeah, uh, Stephen <laughs> is Walter Hill right up the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sal mm-hmm. is across town. Yeah, I mean, you probably know Chris Turner. Uh, I do not stop know twenty two guys like Brian Romans. I have met him. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Brian. Yeah, th- Brian is a, all these guys are members of our VFW post. Yeah. So we we are very tight, and whenever we need music, we call them. Of course. For, for I, anything. They they put on a good show. I love. Yeah, they put awesome. on a great show. Yeah. And Steve and Cochran is a, is my boy as well. Dude, he's, he's a, a trip, man. Dude. He was our uh, he was yeah. the junior vice commander last mm-hmm. year. Yeah. Yes. I I've made like I have a. It's funny. All my friends really are in Nashville. A lot of them are in the Nashville area and I'm up here in Michigan. Um, but you know, I've made connections kind of all over, over the country now. And it's, uh, you know, just trying to continue the work. It's, 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 dude, it's really it's like, it's a circle, man. It, it, it is. Yeah. It is. Especially, fuck? especially in the hundred percent or world do you find the veterans who are, we're, we're, we're retired, right? Like we, yeah. we, we all meet each other at all these different, uh, events yeah. and, 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 and a lot of these, these veteran organizations are lifesaver. I mean, um, you know, a lot of the therapeutic effects of the camaraderie with the veteran community comes sure. from those yeah, events yeah. because, you know, I mean, when I, I, I bitch about the VA, I can't even get them to call me back for a mental health appointment, let alone obtain services. Like we're talking crickets, right? Like yeah. the, no, the, yeah. the, 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 uh, atrocity, if you will, that is going on within the VA mental health system, if you will. Yeah, they flat I out don't even, down. dude. Mm-hmm. Anton, to to be very honest, dude, I went to. Have you ever heard of Save a Warrior? No, I have not. Uh, it's out of Hillsborough, Ohio. Basically, it's like a combination of ACA, AA, CBT, meditation, equine therapy, ropes course, and they do it all in seventy-two hours. But you have five hundred days after you go through the cohort to get yourself right. I haven't been on medicine since last June. Like I was Good taking for you. It's like Tolopram, Trazodone, Mirtazapine. I mean, you name it. You were talking about zombies. I was no. a zombie for like five years. Isn't and it, I don't, it's, I don't take any meds anymore. It's, it's shocking. I look back on a lot of, uh, and there's really periods of my life. I just, I don't remember. Like I tell people, they're like, do you remember when and I go, no, no, I, no, I, I do not. <laughs> Uh, I apologize, whatever it was, uh, you know, it's just some of, uh, and, and I was, looks at, I was 
the law, I was a law enforcement officer and I didn't even realize how sick I was. And it wasn't right. because of morals or integrity or any of that yeah. stuff. It was because they altered my brain chemistry to a way that yep. was just made me not even really human <laughs> to a certain They had point. me on Cytolopram for like nine, 10 years. And then I finally got, you know, I got unplugged. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm an alcoholic, so I, you know, I, I've done weed a couple times in, in college and had some gummies, but, um, my thing was, was alcoholism. I mean, if, if, if I would, I, I, I don't know if I liked smoking weed, I would, but I, I don't, um, and no, no offense to you or no. any of the. No. no cannabis cannabis users this are, this is a tool this is an option it's not for everybody yeah, and it's right. not meant for everybody but it is an option and there are folks who could benefit from it yeah and no definitely it's, it's about educating people it may not be there's hey, if you have high blood pressure there if you have certain things it's it's not just this is fail safe product that can't yeah. hurt you right there are things that that that, that can have adverse yeah. effects on some folks but but educating them so they know about these tools uh is more important to me than actually advocating for its use well this sense. right here i mean with you and 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 whiz and who who's the other guy it was um uh, uh lieutenant smurf uh, yeah smurf, smurf. um smurf lieutenant, and whiz lieutenant and you Gil. You guys, I mean, I, I'm sitting here and 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 listening to you guys. And you are educating w with all these interviews that we've done. I'm more educated than I was like five years yeah. ago. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. That's what it's about. At the end of the day, it's about education and advocacy because, so, you know, what Anton, else do we have? Anton, mm -hmm. my uh, sister and her husband own a weed farm in Michigan. I, I have to get you connected with them. Oh, yeah. We're, we're in Michigan. Royal Oak. Oh, okay. Yeah. Royal Oak's like 20 minutes up the road. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Anytime I could, I yeah. can help. I actually, I do monthly meetings with uh, the cannabis regulatory agency. I was invited into what's called the consumer connection group. So I meet with all the politicians and bureaucrats and, and, and really I've been the voice of the veterans and, uh, and yeah. they're listening. I have a, the one thing I have that nobody can take from me is my big mouth. I say, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I use it all the time. So when's this going to go federal? I think personally, it's hopefully not. within the next couple, no, it will, it will absolutely. Um, but you know what, I'm going to give you this perspective. Uh, everybody keeps asking about when is it going to go federal? And I kind of say, do we want that? Is that really what we want? Uh, legalization is great. And at the end yeah. of the day, nobody should be put in prison for possession of a plant. Right. But the way our process works right now is when they keep talking about federal legalization, they're not doing it properly. And the information, you have a lot of these elderly, older, old school lawmakers yes. who don't have the ability to have the perspective right. that is in the best interest of the people. I say, I say before, before the next election, I believe it'll be legal personally. Um, what form that looks like, because you got to remember once you, once you federally legalize big pharma, big alcohol and big tobacco yeah. are going to come in and bastardize yeah. the yep. system. Correct. I, I agree. So at the very least decriminalize it. Yes. I say decrim. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I agree with that. I have a bag of weed in my pocket and I get pulled over or somebody rear ends me. I'm not even doing nothing wrong. Somebody T-bones me. The police come and investigate. I have a bag of weed in my pocket. I'm going to jail. I didn't even yeah. do anything wrong. In she Tennessee. Yes. Definitely in Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know countless veterans that this has happened to and it's tragic and disgusting. And I think that even as a cop, as a guy, as a fed I yeah, never agreed fan. with, I never agreed with marijuana policy. I, I everybody in my family smoked weed but my, growing up. It was like, I was the only guy who didn't. And it never, I never seen the ill effects, the reefer madness that, that, that people kind of tout. Like it wasn't something that I observed in, in, you know, on the border, I'll tell you on the border, the, the narco trafficking that I witnessed, the, the fact that weed was this commodity in this violent criminal organization yeah. gave it a bad name. Right. And it wasn't necessarily the cannabis 
that was the issue. It was the shit bags trafficking it, trafficking it that were right. also trafficking human beings yeah. and doing other horrible shit. Um, so I think we need to to look contextually at what this really is and and what the harm is. You asked me if I grow. I absolutely grow in the state of Michigan. Yeah. Every household with an adult over the age of 21 is free to grow 12 plants. Uh, if you're a medical patient um, and you recall it's a medical caregiver, you can grow more than that. Um, yeah. For me, uh, I, I yeah, growing my own medicine, the therapy behind working with the plant is just as therapeutic as using it. So, and it's an amazing, it's an amazing relationship. Dude, uh, that's I mean, you're you're you got the gardening in there, you got yeah. the music, you're taking care of a exactly. plant. We've got a nonprofit here in Tennessee, and I'm not going to give you the name right now, but he does that. And I mean, not not with the marijuana, obviously, but I have a question built, about he, growing. He builds sure. gardens in in the back of yeah. veterans' um, and they're backyards. Amazing. Yeah. I, I yeah. got one. I got one in the back of my house, and he built it for me. And I go out and I take care of it, and it's very therapeutic. It's awesome. Yep, hundred percent. I have a question. So you're allowed to have twelve plants. Say <laughs> I live in Michigan. I have twelve plants. What are the chances like the neighbors are like some neighbor kids going to hop over there and like hack them down and steal them? Like, is that an issue? Oh, God. Croptober is coming up. Oh, yeah. Croptober. Look, in Michigan, you you have a very, you know, well, you I grow indoors. I grow. I don't I don't oh, grow okay. outdoors. You can. The law allows for you to grow either indoors or outdoors. Um, right. You know, there's some rules, okay. locked facility. But oh, yeah, there's absolutely uh, people get ripped off. That's why I don't recommend growing outdoors. So people don't <laughs> steal your shit. Yeah, it's, absolutely. <laughs> That's yep, a, it, it's a problem. That's why I was thinking, like, if, if you're allowed to grow 12 plants, I'm like, I'm pretty sure they're not going to last two months out there. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's I will say this. It's become so prevalent that that everybody does it type of a thing. Yeah. Like uh, I live in a very affluent community and uh, you would never, you would never know, you know, I'm respectful of my neighbors. I make sure you don't, you can't smell, you can walk into my house. You would never know I grow because I've made the Ventilation. investment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything is above yeah. board and, and, yeah. and within the law. And I will tell you this, even though I follow the law to the T, I still feel like I'm doing something wrong. And well, that yeah. is well, something it's been illegal. Unique. It's been like taboo for your entire life. Absolutely. And yeah. that is, that is something we need to, as a society, even if you yeah. don't agree with it, you need to realize the people, this is the will of the people. And this yeah. is what we yeah. voted on and it must be respected. Fleek, where did you, where did you find this guy, man? Who, 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 who gave uh, you his name? He is, well, dude, he's like one of the coolest guests we've had on the show. We've been, man. Friends, we've been friends on Facebook for a while and I yeah. don't even remember where we met. I, th I think it might have. I think Stephen Cochran actually. Yeah, was probably it, Cochran. Was Stephen Cochran. Yeah, we're we're friends. Talking. We're friends too. We're both we're all, we're all friends. Facebook friends. Yeah, too. I'm uh, I'm Facebook. Wait, yeah. hold on. Wait, wait. Right. Hold. Yeah, I am. Look, yeah, Combat Chaps is friends with. He'll friend anybody. Dude, I got like five thousand yeah. friends. I can't yeah. remember all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, you, you you look me up. We're we're, we're friends. Yep. Uh huh. I I do my posting on Facebook. That's kind of yeah. instead of reading the oh, newspaper. Shit. We are friends. <laughs> wow, wow, we've been we've been friends for a long time, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're mutual friends with Andrew Shaver. Yep. Uh, yeah, how do you know Andrew Shaver? Who me? The, uh, dude, he no, was like Anton. Me. I know. Oh. Through Cochran and, and oh, okay. Sal and all those Yeah, uh, Shaver is a great dude. That guy's yeah, an amazing a guitarist. guitarist. Holy yeah, shit! Yeah. Oh yeah. He's Jamie good. Sailor. Uh, yep. Adam Martin and yep. and Mike and Big Mike. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jesus, yeah. I didn't yeah. uh, I didn't even put two and two together. I'm so sorry, <laughs> sir. <laughs> oh hey, look, it's a it's a big community, and I think, like I said, I'm just starting to get to the point to where I'm getting getting my I say get my name out there, but I'm really connecting with people. I'm really finding that voice, and uh, which we haven't had in Michigan for a long time. There's a lot of right. veterans who are suffering out here and yeah. you know what happens when veterans we withdraw you guys the guys they yeah. isolate they're living in the woods you know yep. my goal is how do we get to those guys and gals and and let and them bring them with, back into the fold yes bring exactly. them back into the fold they're like uh i had a you know it was crazy it was a long day the other day and my phone rang and it was just a veteran i don't know this guy it was just somebody gave him my phone number 
and I don't know why he decided to reach out to me, but he did. And, and, and he was hurting and it was, life. it was really cool. Like we had a long conversation. Yeah. I didn't know this individual, but you know, say, Hey man, it's okay. You know, if you need anything, I, I don't, I'm here for you. You know I mean? We're, we're, we're bonded in a way right. that it doesn't matter whether we know each other or not. And Dude, I've, I've like, had a bunch of those calls, man. And they are, they are life changing for the, for the guy on the other end of the phone. And for yeah. me, yep. you get to save lives. Like I remember yeah. calling the cops on some yeah. guy for a, a health check. Cause he had a shotgun in his house and in North Carolina, I was like, how did you get my number? But I'll talk to you until the cops come. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's very sad. It's 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 very satisfying. It is. To, and to well, help it's, our own. it's well, not only is it satisfying, it's necessary because ain't nobody else going to help us. No, nope, that's, that's that's good. I right. like and, that. Uh, we started the show off. Like I said, you save one person's life. You didn't save one person's life. You literally saved thousands of people like that. That one person that people that are connected around him, his mother, his father, his siblings, their nieces nephews kids yeah. wives like it spreads out you you just save thousands of people yeah when you say 22 a day yeah. what i never want that to be is just a number i never i don't want that to be a a cliche or a, i right. want them like you said those are 22 mothers those are 22 fathers those yeah. are sons every single brothers day. and mothers but and every day they're doing this you you have to admit yeah. that that 22 number thing it's getting a little Cliche. Uh, exactly. Cliche. I mean, yeah. they say it all the cliche. time. And it's, yeah. I, I don't, the VA says it's different. I don't yeah. believe yeah. it. It's like 17.5 and people. If it's they, one, one's too many. Yeah. One, one a day. Many. Could you imagine one person a day committing suicide? That's unfathomable. I can't, I can't wrap my head around one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and you got to remember too, some states don't report. So no. They, and yeah. California, don't. Texas. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, no, I've, I've heard that too. And it's, yeah. it's crazy. It it's, is, it's uh, I mean, we don't even have the real numbers. We're Two never the biggest states have. in the union, by yeah. the way. Yeah. They're not even not reporting. So not the reporting. numbers probably, it's probably a number that we really wouldn't be comfortable with. Yeah. And right. it's, it's sad. And I, it, uh, it, it makes me sick. And, but you know, here's the thing is I struggle still too. Right. And we, I know everybody it stays with you for the rest of your life. You just yeah. have to manage it. You have to manage it, and yep. some days are better than others. But it's you know, not a, it's not pink clouds every day, man. I'll tell you that. No, it is it is not. It has been usually for me the fall is the hardest time. That's when I had attempted suicide in October. Like I'm getting to the point now where September, October, and I'm it makes me scared. I go, oh shit, I know what's yeah, coming, yeah. and and I'm fucked up until you know april when the sun comes back out yeah. and it's it's tough but yeah you get through it right what's your goal are you staying in michigan uh, you know i'll tell you what the kids we got another eight years with all the kids before they're kids? out of the house yeah. yeah i have two and then my girlfriend has two so we got four between the two of us and my daughter actually starts junior year on tuesday my son's 12 we have 12 11 and 10 yes yeah, so uh, we got a while but i really for me I want to be an expat. I want to go, I'll go traipse the globe, you know, three months in Peru, three months in here. Me too. Yeah. I yeah. told my wife that we will go on a European, European vacation every year. Yeah. After I, June 30th. I try, I travel, <laughs> I travel, you know, when I can. Uh, and you know, and even that's tough because there's been times where, you know, I was supposed to go to Croatia last September and I got on the plane and had a panic attack and I had to like trip was canceled. I couldn't even breathe. I had to get off the airplane. Like, so the oh, PTSD damn. angle of things really still messes puts, me up. It, even puts though, a, it puts a damper on some things. It and, really affects things. So, but I, you hate know, going to, I hate going to New York city. Cause it reminds me of the city of Ramadi in 2006. Mm -hmm. Like I get panic attacks, you know, I haven't been in New York and in forever. And, uh, yeah, it's just some places they just they have that lingering bad memory. Yep, absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, well, wow. the military does a great job of building people up to fight wars, but they do a and terrible not, job to yeah. break them down to send them back home. It's a promise. It's a false promise that was made yeah. to all of us, and it's a do false I, promise that's been made for for hundreds of years. Really, do officers yeah. go through um like the enlisted? We had this uh, in the Marines. We call it steps and taps, separation and tra transitions. Do officers uh, do they have that that same thing? Like when you're about to get out or lose your commission or 
resign your commission or whatever it is. You know what they did for, uh, I do believe there is something I will tell okay. you when, when we came, you know, it was funny when we came back, we were, I was medevaced out and my debriefing essentially was the chaplain coming in and saying, Hey, if anybody here cheated on their wives, keep it to yourselves. That was what? literally the advice. That was literally the advice I got from a from chaplain. chaplain. That, was that. that was my military. That was my military debriefing. Chaps. I shit you not. I'm not exaggerating. No one way. That really? Was, it was literally a spiel of save your families, suck it up, and move forward. And when I left, oh, that's terrible advice. When I when I left the military, I literally like I I drove, got my two fourteen, and drove away. I didn't even I didn't out process or anything. Like they did it for me. I didn't do anything. Um, so oh. I was provided no reason. You still have your cat card? <laughs> I have my, well, I have the hundred percent card that they give the, you. The blue one, right? The, uh, no, it's a uh, orange, the, orangish. Is the pink orange one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's DAV. It's a dis- yeah, uh, the uh, indefinite, um, yeah. where yep. you get on any base. I have that yeah. too. It's, I call it the Dependa card because it's not the retired card. Right. It's the Dependa card. Yeah, I, and like I said, I, I ended up even – even it was – well, I got out in 07, and it wasn't until 2015 that they actually ended up going back and retiring me. I, put, I was put on TDRL, and it was this whole thing because they screwed me over, but it took them years to figure it out. Uh, you know, And I'll tell you, my 214 – I never went back and got like my 214 still says disability existed prior to service. And that was wrong. In 2015, right. they came back and retired me. I don't even know the process to get yeah, a new DD. It's, you know um, I mean? like, it's a DD 215 that you make your changes. I was to like, your DD I said, I don't really give a shit. Like, yeah, I I, yeah, for the, I, it was like, eh, it doesn't really matter to me. But, but the OT, that thing, the OTH and getting those, those guys help. Yep. I mean, that is a huge thing. Cause that OTH, I mean, you can't even get into the VFW with an OTH. Right, right. And I'm going to change that here, at least here uh, nationally if I can. But Are you in the VFW? I have to ask. I am not in the VFW. Uh, oh, I, you should be. I am not. Oh, you know, here I we just, go. I, no, <laughs> hey, I'm a national recruiter. I have to ask. I'm sorry. I, I should. You know what? I just had this. I was. Go- I did this golf thing with this PGA Hope, which is. Oh, P- uh, in Buffalo. Uh, no, this was in Michigan. Well, they're national, but this was yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just we did this golf tournament with all these old crusty PGA. I hope I know. Um, yeah, one of my Marines, he does. Actually, this is really funny because um, he he and I served together. But he lives in Buffalo, New York, and he does PGA Hope up there. They do it. Na- it's a national thing. Yeah. And these, these old Vietnam guys, you must come to the VFW and drink with us. And I said, ah, uh, maybe, man. I, don't, I think that some our generation, we just kind of. It's a hey, you need to, no, no, you need to come to our post because we don't have a bar. We we just go there and do community service and we help our community. By the way, I did. I just got Murfreesboro, Tennessee, a Purple Heart City, oh. uh, this week. So or last Very week. Very cool. Last week. So cool. we we do a, a the VFW. We're trying to change it. Um, we're trying to get you know out of the whole smoky bar thing. And, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a it's a process, just like what you're going through uh, in Michigan with uh, with legalization and all, and and the Fed stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Make that shit legal. I agree. Make Bring it to Tennessee. Legal. I, Bring you know, it to Tennessee. Look, I don't want to. I don't like if I. Here, here's they, my thing. Hey, hey, here's my thing with marijuana. Wait, second, that, chaps. wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Here's my thing with marijuana. I could smoke a joint on a Friday <laughs> night after work, right? On Monday. A mishap at work, I get drug tested, and I get popped because I smoked something three days ago, but the night before, I drank a whole freaking fifth of vodka by myself, and that's and nothing. okay. Perfectly fine. That yeah. makes literally no sense to me. I'm not at work. I'm not getting high at work. I, that was three days ago. Yeah. What do you care what, what I do at my house? Tennessee, come on. There, I don't know a single person in Tennessee that doesn't smoke or has not smoked or whatever. Like most, I mean, I on, think there music, is an city. HR. Uh, I think there is an HR bill that they're trying to bring to the house. The, gov- the governor already said if it comes to my desk, I'm going to veto it. Hold on, hold on, hold Craziness. on. Let me look this That's up. That's insane. It's no, we, we just, um, our legislative guys, um, at the VFW, they mentioned like the dual license plate, the bingo, and then I think legalization was like way at the end. Well, yeah, get, way at the end. Yeah, at I, just gotta, least, I, I just got to. 
let's get it in place for veterans. You know, there's been bills that have been introduced to at least let it medically for veterans, you know, yeah. at the very least, come on guys, what's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? Like this is, there's no reason that you shouldn't at least make this available to people to, to pursue it's craziness. Oh, it's uh, okay. Hemp and, uh, duh, duh, duh. Yeah. It's legislation is pending Senate bill 1477 to legalize marijuana in Tennessee. If passed, the bill would legalize the personal possession and yada, yada, yada. It won't yada, happen. Yada. I, it won't happen in Tennessee. The governor already said he will strike Dude, we can't it even out. get bingo in Tennessee. I mean, <laughs> yeah. come on. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's on the normal, uh, N-O-R-M-L dot org. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah no, Michigan Normal is an organization. I'm okay, very, okay, um, okay. They're a national organization, and I, yeah, at Michigan Normal, I'm very good friends with their executive director, and uh, uh, it's an organization who I advocate with uh, regularly. So, I mean, they're they're one of the good guys. They advocate basically for the consumers, and and that's what we need more of. There's no yeah, reason. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, yeah, it's oh, insane. 40, 50, 60, mm-hmm. nine, Let's slurp down a fifth. Dude, there's like and that's there's okay. like 40 states on this map that are green, that are operational. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Tennessee is is a big old black. Yeah. Mark. Y- y'all come to Michigan. Georgia, we'll, we'll North hook you Carolina, up. South Carolina, Texas. I'm from Michigan. I moved down to this stupid ass state because I thought it was going to be good. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I Michigan has its faults, but yeah. we do we do. Um, we, I think they try, you know, they do some good stuff for the veterans. We have the hundred percent, uh, property tax, you know, yeah. uh, you, you don't have to pay property taxes here. If you're a hundred percent. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, New I, Hampshire. Yeah. I grew up in New Hampshire. Six, I was mm-hmm. born in Tennessee, raised in New Hampshire. Um, and Tennessee is, is a green state. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the state of Michigan. It's one of my favorite yeah, states I, in the country. I, but I need to go visit, the, man. I need to go see what rough, Michigan's man. all about. Winters are rough. The oh, winters are rough. That's why I'm down here. Yeah. <laughs> the older I, I, you get, the worse it gets. I snowboarding is an option, I guess. It is. You know, it, I know option. a lot of people that do it. Snowboarding it, is definitely not you. Get a place in Tennessee and Michigan. Boom, mm-hmm. Stephen Cochran right there. You'll be doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I know when he was up here for we spent uh, New Year's Eve together. He was here in, in <laughs> Michigan too. And we got to hang out and and oh the the food that they cooked was un- the southern food was unbelievable. Oh yeah. Uh I mean, yeah, those are some Wait, of my Wait, did you have people. his beans? I did have the beans. Oh my god, they are yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen yeah. Cochran, your beans are amazing, dude. <laughs> Good and people, his, man. And his wife looks like a freaking Barbie doll. Mm. She's not very nice. Megan, Megan's adorable. great, and she still nice. she still works at um, uh, the Murfreesboro Magazine down here in town. She still yeah. helps them out a lot, so that's kind of cool. He's a good, just a good spirit. They're all good. Sale, sales, just they're just good. I actually had Sale on my Fob sixteen twenty podcast. He actually came and did a song for us, and nice. yeah, he was one of our first guests that we. That's had. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yep, yep. Dude, cool. he played for three hours straight. We paid him one hundred and fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. And guess what? Yeah, that's cheap. He, he's got, um, the owners of that restaurant want him to play every single month now because I they love him, him every so month. much. Yeah, oh, yeah. I would want him every month too. So. He's amazing. Well, why, he's would, a good, why wouldn't you want him? <laughs> I, I showed him, uh, I showed him the America's <laughs> Got Talent video and they're yeah, like, yeah, right. Yeah. I was like, we just had him. I was like, yeah, that's why I gave him to you. He's amazing. He's got a yeah. great voice. Him, Steven's got a great voice. Anton, uh, do you know uh, Tyler J. Satterfield? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I hope J. he's oh, yeah, yeah, Tyler J. I haven't, he didn't come to Cherry Bend last year. I don't know if he's coming this year, but oh, yeah, he's cool. We, we have Dude, that, that EAS guy, song, man. I, I Every time he's I amazing. see him, EAS song, and he won't play it because he's played it so many damn yeah. times. He, he's, he's like, uh, He's got that Waylon spirit. Yeah, oh, he does. God, he's yeah. a he's an outlaw, dude. Yeah, he's, he's an, an outlaw. Outlaw, outlaw country him. to the he's outlaw country. That's right. Yep. Yes, uh, that's what I love about him. And he's he's got yeah. that cool, he's, he's got that hat that hat, he wears black everywhere. Hat, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, we we we've we've partied a little bit. Yeah, he's he's a good dude. I, 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 I enjoy all those guys. Are you going out to Colorado with the guys? I have not. not I haven't heard anything about Colorado okay. yet. That doesn't Talk mean I ain't going though. Talk to Sal about Colorado because he was telling me about it Saturday and. It's like Steven's going to be there and Sal and, and all oh. of stop 22. It's, it's supposed to be okay. pretty, pretty cool. They do good work. They all do, they do work. great work. Yeah, Amazing. absolutely. You're coming, right. dude, you're coming to the gala in October, man. 
I'm always down. I always I'm I'm, to, I'm actually um, I'm rowing three thousand miles from Antigua. You're, here we go. To Spain. You're, you're a crew guy. I was a crew in high school. I was an oarsman. You were an oarsman too. I was an oarsman. Yeah, I no rode stroke. I rode, I rode. I rode. I rode stroke. I was a stroke. Stroke seat for a while. I was engine yeah. room, port, or starboard, and bow in college, man. There's no engine rooms on those things. What are you talking uh, about? It's it's no. They call it the engine room because you're you're not the diesel? stroke. You're not the bow. Yeah. So you're yeah. like in the middle. That's the engine room. Yeah, I went. We were in. I remember. National. Where'd you row? Uh, Buffalo for Canisius High School. Uh, we rode nationals, the whole deal. The only thing I didn't get to row in was the Henley, and I wanted to. I rode Henley in 1994, baby. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get to row Henley, but yeah, yeah, I was a yeah. Was I rode at a boarding school in Massachusetts. I went. Mm -hmm. I rode at Brooks. Okay. And then I rode at uh, Rollins College. Uh, so six years, but we're actually going to be rowing this boat from Antigua to Spain, three thousand miles. From California to Hawaii. No, it's got changed. Um, our team leader, uh, he wanted to do that in eight months. We can't, we can't raise a hundred thousand dollars in eight months. I'm sorry, can't do it. I'm not that good. So now we got two years, two hundred thousand dollars. Eight months to row, dude. I will, miles. dude. Hey, I, dude. I erred three times a week. Oh, oh, yeah. I know. Good for you. I, don't I hate that. it. I can't stand. It. I hate the erg. I, I like water training mm -hmm. instead. But you were at what starboard port. I rode. I was or, actually. I could do both. I was. So I too. was actually. Yeah. I was like. Uh, I don't know what you'd call that. Uh, ambidextrous. You could. Ambidextrous. You're an ambidextrous yeah. Row, yeah. And I rode shit. I think I rode three seat for a while. I rode stroke. I rode. I. You name it. I did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude. I, loved, we, I. I. My goal. I wanted to row for West Point. Was why I was doing it. And then, Dude, we went to Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and we got our asses beat by Navy. They killed us. Yeah, I used to go to Cornell every. Yeah, the, Cor the, yeah uh, uh, Ithaca, the, New York. Yeah, ice, yeah, of course. The ice in Buffalo would would we wouldn't row until the end of May, so we'd go to Cornell and we'd row. We used to beat the shit out of you know Cornell, and yeah, we were high school guys, but we're national boats. I mean, these guys are national yeah. champions. And did you uh, row at uh, the Dad Vales? No. Mm -mm. We did a lot uh, of head. We did a lot of head. A lot of head head fall. races. And uh, head head chat. Uh, the head of the hooch in uh, in Georgia. You go no, down there. No, a lot of the head races we were up in Canada. Oh the, well, the, the dude, head, those yeah. Canadians. They, those Saint guys Catharines, know how to row. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot yeah. in Saint Catharines and Rome, New York. Yeah, uh -huh. rode a lot there. Rode. Uh, we did a lot Canada. of Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. Connecticut rowing. Um, Crazy little small world, huh? Dude, I'm like. <laughs> Oh, I hate to shit. break up your little love fest. Sorry, here, sorry man. We're over Dude, an hour me now. another rower, oh, man. It's, we, try, it's... we try to shoot for an hour, and you guys are... See, we went over, <laughs> just jabbing. Hour well, and seven. But man. it's okay. Now that I know that you're a fellow oarsman, I'm I'm going to be calling you very soon Give me a buzz, about man. our thing. You, you about get our on this team, you can... You can uh, Row, row, row your boat. Yeah, from there you go. To well, <laughs> well, well, the boat is joint like, hanging out of my mouth, yeah. and we'll go row, row, row. It, it, it's a big one want. where you can sleep on the boat, and it's like every rower is two hours know. on, two hours off, and you sounds row. Like a it sounds like a Viking ship. Sort of. I mean, that's yeah, that's our theme song. Actually, we just picked our theme song, and it's my um, my mother, uh, the Viking song, the the shanty. Oh my god! And, well, I just had my team leader here for the weekend. And we have to, we're, we're having this big, big gala next October. It's hopefully going to be at the Ryman. We're oh. going to sell, we're going to sell tickets. We're going to have speakers. We're going to have, um, and we have to buy this boat and we train in Mobile, Alabama. And it's called fight or die. That's like the, it. they like do a it. Pacific row and they do an Atlantic row. So very cool. Yeah. Well, um, I want you, I dude. I want you a part of this, man. Give me a buzz me. anytime. I love it. I appreciate y'all having me on. Oh yeah, yeah dude. Session. This has been fan, this has been fantastic yeah. for me. I'm I'm like I'm gonna go <laughs> rub one out right now. Shit. <laughs> oh Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> you went there. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Fire me for me? Nope, nah. You're a chaplain, bro. You can't talk like that. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Fire right. me? Probably. All right, we're gonna wrap this up, man. All right. Sunday Damn. night. That's Anton, great. thanks for joining us. Yeah, great talk, um, Anton. Everybody, click on the YouTube link, subscribe, like, and subscribe. Help us get going. Uh, we'll see you guys next Sunday. Yeah. Peace, everybody. See I you guys. Peace. You. All right.